Very good afternoon to everybody. Thank you for joining us on a World Earth Day. Yes, on a beautiful, beautiful Monday afternoon. And my name is uh, Cedric, and behind the camera with me on uh, Wendy, we've got uh, Muscles and Paul. So thanks so much for joining us. It is a hot afternoon, and uh, well, I think it's going to be a great day because I cannot wait to get to some of these water holes to go and find out exactly what's been coming down for a drink. But. Uh, so good to be out on a Monday afternoon. Well, joining us on uh, the safari this afternoon, on a safari, we've got uh, Amy and a panda, and of course our beautiful team in uh, Johannesburg, our directors for the afternoon is uh, Nadine and Luyanda, and our tech guru that side is Simba, and our tech guru this side is a Showmax. Well, as you know, this is a live and interactive show, so if you've got any comments or any questions that you want to send through to us, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, make sure that you do subscribe or join as a member so you can send those comments and questions through. If you're watching on the Wild Earth website, make sure that you do register so you can send them through to us for the afternoon. Well, I'm sitting here, it is Kids Drive as it, as it is, so we are going to try and do a few nice, interesting things. All good, uh, Mpo? All right, let me just try, so my audio is a little bit funny. Eh? All right. All right, so what I'm sitting here at, at the moment here, on the road, we've got some elephant dung. So, <clears throat> is it bad again? Uh, all right, I'm going to just take my audio, my little mic pack out here, yeah, so we can just see if it's uh, all right there. Good? All right. All right, so I do apologize about that. I think it's just this mic pack was just in the wrong position there. So what we've got here, we've got a nice pile of elephant dung. So remember, elephants have to eat a lot of vegetation per day, and they're not very kind of selective. They can eat grasses, twigs, uh, leaves, roots, bulbs, fruits, seeds, so many different things. So 5% of their body weight is a lot of food per day. And only 30% of that food gets utilized, in other words, gets digested in the tummy, 70% of it gets passed through the elephant's gut. So if I look at the elephant's dung here now, so it's not a problem, you can dig through it because it's just dung, it's a lot of just grass. As I said, 70% is pretty much not, not digested through the elephant's uh, uh, tummy area. So you can see it, all the grasses, the leaves, the little branches. Look at that. Look at this. Dylan, age 10. Good afternoon. Yes, let's see what we can find for you this afternoon. Okay, so I've got a little branch here. So it's always nice just to dig through here so you can pick up uh, what. Going. Huh? Going. Is it going? Uh, All right, see what the elephant has uh, actually eaten around this side. And mm, there we go. All right, there we go. Some more branches, more grasses and all the leaves inside here. Yeah, very, very interesting. So, they actually say, if you're stuck in the vegetation in the bush, like me now, I'm stuck here, and uh, pretty much what you can actually do, you can actually kind of take a, a, a lighter, and you can actually then put a little fire with the uh, elephant dung, and put it around your little campsite, just to deter all the animals from coming into your campsite. So yes, very, very, very nice. I enjoyed that. All right, let's move on. Sorry, Nadine, go again with that. I did not copy. Sorry, Nadine is just chatting to me. All right, let's go. Look 
closer to the car. All right, thanks, Nadine. Yeah, no, I was very close to the car. I was just in front of the car. All right. Let's go on. Looks like something wrong with the, the mic pack's fine now. All right, so I won't be able to get out of the car again this afternoon. So it looks like they want me to get out of the car. Everybody doesn't want me to get out of the vehicle, so. <laughs> Poo! Yay! Best ever chew toy. The lion cubs do lose their little milk teeth like uh, other animals, and it's something that we've seen more with leopard cubs than we have with lion cubs. We haven't really focused in on the, the process of their teeth and the way that they grow, but it happens sort of around about, I'm guessing with lion cubs, around about six to eight months, maybe eight months would be more realistic, where they start to grow their permanent teeth and the, the little milk teeth pop out. And that is elephant dung. And elephant dung is fun. I'm bored with tails now. Elephant dung is the next thing. Wow. Yes, does that taste nice? Blah, 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 blah. Flim. Hello, hello, boys and girls. It is so good to have you with us for this afternoon's Kids Drive Live on Earth Day. My name is Amy and behind the camera with me is Panda. And we will be with you for your very own show this afternoon. And we are starting off by finding the culprits of that dung that Cedric was talking about. We did have some elephants in the road. They are moving off slowly, so I'm going to keep on driving so that we can get uh, a better look at them. We've just come past a big water hole. And uh, they all had a drink of water. We just missed it. And there's two elephants at the back that look a lot darker than the ones in the front. And that's because they went for a swim. It is 35 degrees Celsius here today. And so it makes sense that uh, they would go for a swim. I definitely would if I could. Well, Elsa, you nine years old, you want to know how many water holes we have. Um, in the whole of the Sabi Sand Reserve, a lot. I couldn't give you a, an exact number, probably over a hundred. But here on Juma, we have Biffles Hook Dam, Treehouse Dam, <coughs> Twin Dams, and then Gauri Dam. So that makes four. And then there are one or two smaller pans as well. Then, of course, on a different property that we can also drive on is called Chitwa Dam. And that's a big dam. And there's an elephant making some very fresh dung. I don't think the dung Cedric showed you just now was as fresh as that one. As we go forward, we'll actually try and show you what really, really, really fresh elephant dung looks like. Right, I'm going to move closer again, Panda. It was just a loose stick in the road that bumped the vehicle, so don't worry about that noise. So now that these elephants are finished with their drink, they are going to head off into the thickets and start feeding, which makes it quite tricky for us to There we go. And you can also see that very fresh dung in the road. It's almost yellow, that's how fresh it is. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content.
Elephant dung is mostly made up of grass at this time of the year, but also now lots of leaves and barks and twigs, and I'm so sure Cedric was telling you all about that. But it's really nice to be able to show you it nice and fresh. you 10 years old uh, yes yes when dung beetles are looking for dung they need fresh dung and the reason for that Samson is because they have to be able to mold it into the little ball that they need to make and um, fresh dung works best it's full of moisture nutrients still it hasn't dried out it's easy to work with and mold into the shape so that is why dung beetles will only use fresh dung to make their balls with But at this time of year, there's actually, I haven't seen a dung beetle for a long time. Thank you, Amy. All right, well, I am sitting here on the road now. Finally, I've got my... Uh, audio all fixed up and all that so I'm just gonna draw a circle in this circle there's three different animals that walked past here uh, past here in the last 24 hours all right and what's very nice there's two different uh, foot structures that we do have here all right so the first one is the first animal that we've got here as you can see I'm gonna draw it quickly here you can see this hoof there's one hoof like that. You can see nicely, it goes there, it comes up, comes down, and back there. You can see it, huh? So this one, it's just like the horse, or like a donkey. So this is pretty much a zebra. So the zebra came past here, walking into this direction. Draw a little arrow. Heading into that direction. And what do we call this? Well, we'll call it angular grade, angulates. So it's an animal that walks on its nails. And this is a odd-toed ungulate, odd number. So odd numbers is one, three, five, seven. That's odd numbers. Now this is one nail on the on the hoof or on the, yeah, on the hoof itself. So that's why it's an odd-toed ungulate of a zebra. So that zebra came through here during the night or maybe during the morning and headed into that direction. The second ungulate is this one here yeah, now. I'm going, to, I'm going to circle it there. Can you see that, Mpo? Uh -huh. And it looks like an arrowhead. <coughs> there, it's got one little toe there and another one here. Like a, just like an arrowhead. Here's another one here. And another one here. Another one's a bit difficult because it's got very small hooves. And this is an impala. All right. So it's one of the antelopes that we have here, a very common antelope. And this impala is also heading into that direction now this is a even toed ungulate even numbers two four six eight even numbers so it's got two nails on the hoof not like this it's got just the one nail this is an odd number odd toed ungulate because it's got two nails on the hoof this is known as an even toed ungulate and this impala is walking into that direction now we've got a different we've got a We've got a different one here, a whole different foot structure here now. I'm going to draw a little circle around this. All right, so this one now is a lion. All right, a female lion. Now you can see clearly, I'll draw it quickly here for you. We've got the one lobe, two lobes, three lobes at the back, at the back uh, pad, and then it's got the four toes. One, two, three, four. All right, so this is a female lion going which way? going into that direction there 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 going up the road so going opposite direction of the zebra and the impala so now remember what i said just now this is ungulates animals walking on their nails now with the lion hyena leopard foxes jackal wolves so we pretty much call these now digitigrade all right so digitigrade so they're walking on their digits all right, so not walking on their nails, lions and that, all walking on their digits. 
All right, so that's what we call this digit grade, not angular grade. So this is exactly, now why do I say it's a lion? Well, it hasn't got any nail marks. So hyenas, dogs, wolves, jackal, they'll have nails, yeah. Remember lions and leopards, they got retractable nails. So that, in other words, the nails retract back into the sheath, into their uh, uh, paw. As well as all the cats have the three lobes here. One, two, three. Whether it's a dog, or it's a hyena, or jackal, or wolves, they got one and two, just the two, like a heart. All right, with the lions, leopards, uh, all the cats have got the three at the back. Why is this uh, lion walking in the opposite direction? Well, they could have come completely different times. I mean, this, uh, is, <clears throat> if you look here now, there's a perfect example. Can you see them, Paul? Yeah. Now you can see that this zebra hoof, see the zebra hoof is on top of this lion track. So who came first? Which animal came first here? The lion. The lion came per first. So the lion came during the night time, walked past here. And then the zebra, maybe early hours this morning, came on top with its uh, uh, hoof and it pretty much landed on top of the lion's uh, paw there or the track of the lion. All right, so the lion came first and then maybe, maybe three, four hours later, the zebra came past. All right, so this lion is not following the zebras. If it was following the zebras, you'll find the lion track will also be on top of the zebra tracks and also heading into that direction. All right, so that is the foot structure of these three. And then there's a third foot structure, and that is for us humans, monkeys, baboons, gorillas, chimpanzees, all those ones, all the primates, we call it, uh, we call it plantigrade. Because what happens? We plant our entire foot down. So we are plantigrade foot structures, all the cats and hyenas are that, digitigrade, animals with paws is digitigrade, and then all the animals with hooves on it is known as angular grade. All right. Anyway, while we're going to continue, let's head over to Amy as she's got a elephant. Welcome back, everyone. We have found these elephants again a little bit further up the road and one is feeding off this tree right in front of us very well disguised behind what we call a bush willow tree but it is a very thick area so we're lucky to see these elephants at all they can so quickly disappear into the bush It's amazing how such a big animal can disappear so quickly. Just like that. <laughs> I'm going to go forward a little bit. Um, I do apologize if there is any sort of picture breakup or anything like that, but hopefully the signal will be fine. We are surrounded by elephants at the moment. They are all over. There is a bit of a clearing coming up, so hopefully that will give us a really good view. Just a little bit further. They're all moving through the bush here, around us. Daniela, you're 10 and yes, elephant dung, if you can get hold of it, is a great fertilizer. Helps the soil grow, uh, well, sorry, helps the, the plants in the soil grow. Lots of, lots of good nutrients um, that is in the dung.
Oh, there's a nice breeze. I think you all saw how um, warm it is today. What I was saying, so in the beginning of the drive, it's very, very warm. And so the breeze is welcome. The elephants went to drink. Some went to go swim. Do you see how it hits that uh, its trunk on the ground like that? It's actually dusting off its food. Because the last thing you want is some sand in your mouth. Oof, that's not nice. Okay, boy. On the 30th of April, Wild Earth will be coming off the DSTV platform. We want you to come with us into a more sustainable future. How, you might ask? Well, YouTube is a brilliant way for you to enjoy the live drives. Come to our channel and you can enjoy the live drives for free. Alternatively, join our membership program and you'll get an assortment of other wonderful perks. We'll see you on YouTube. The whole herd is going to come across here in front, Oof. but um, you can just see them, but it is a bit thick. <laughs> the 
They're all moving again. Let me try and pull forward one more time, everybody. Just around this corner, maybe we could get a glimpse of them coming across the road. There they come. So we can watch a few elephants now coming across the road. There should be one or two little ones in between as well. You can just see how well camouflaged these elephants are. And camouflage is just a really fancy way of saying blending in with the background. Sounds like there's a pan nearby that they're gonna uh, splash themselves with mud in just by the sounds on the left. There's one more elephant coming across the road and then I'll maybe, what did it cross further back? I'll maybe see if we can get a view of that. Alright, I think they've all come across so let's carry on. That was quite nice. Oh, Jenna, it's a possibility. Um, but right now, no, I don't think so. I think if the elephants picked up that there were any um, lions around them, they would react quite dramatically. Uh, elephants don't like lions at all, and they would be quite worked up and trumpeting, flapping, flapping their ears, running around. Um, but there's always the possi there's always the possibility because out here in the bush we never quite know where any animal is they there could be a pride of lions lying just beyond this pan um where these elephants are now there's a bit of water if you listen you can actually hear the elephant splashing i wonder if you can pick anything up there at all you're a bit higher than me but um yeah unfortunately it's in a very thick spot so i'm not going to be able to drive in there it's just off the road here and quite a dip but we can listen And what those elephants are doing is they're taking some very thick watery mud and they're splashing it on their bodies, covering themselves in it. And that helps keep them cool for a very long time. It dries in this hot sun and then you'll probably find those elephants move off to find um, a dead tree or, well not even a dead tree, what we call a rubbing post, which is maybe one of these big trees around here or maybe one of fallen over tree and then they rub up against it and scratch around and that mud helps take, so, take off little bugs and things that are on their skin. I'm 
just going to pull forward a little bit, see if we can find a gap for you all. It's a very tricky spot. I can see some ears flapping there. I don't know if we, you've got, can see that at all, just through all these bushes. We're going to try to show you everybody. There, you can see some movement of the elephants behind there. Anna, yes, absolutely. Elephants are very family orientated and very protective of the little ones in their herd, even if they aren't their mother. So that's very, very important that elephants do do that. I can see them coming out here, Panda. Let me just go forward. The whole herd's going to come out there, just through those uh, bush willows there. And this is what they had in mind. They knew they were moving in this direction. You can see them there. I do apologize for the view, everyone, but uh, it is the best we can do right now. let me loop around this road does curve so maybe we'll get them again on the other side everybody but yes um, elephant herds the families the females um, they will protect a baby they will all crowd around it and protect it it's incredible to see uh, and they really do act as a unit it's amazing it's beautiful to see that um, the, the, the bond that an elephant herd has with each other oh wow Hi everybody. <laughs> we found them. You can see this elephant glistening in the sun. They had a bit of a mud bath like I was saying. Wow, we've been able to stick and trail these elephants all the way from Buffelsook Dam along the road. Ooh, Kelsey, you're 10 years old. You want to know what my favorite wild animal is? So Kelsey, I have to answer this question in two parts. My favorite wild animal is an elephant. My favorite baby animal is a baby rhino. <laughs> I love elephants they make me so happy they put a smile on my face and I always have to stop for an elephant when I see one even if I'm driving in the Kruger Park all right let me carry on again once again moving forward keeping up with these elephants on the move This one might also <laughs> they really haven't want to be be on camera. All right, let's carry on up the hill, everyone. To apologize if there's any picture breakup we did go through a little dip there but we can still see these elephants so I'm hoping that we'll be able to show you them I think one last time because they are now moving off into the bush Just remember that the first hour of our sunset safaris is a kids drive so we take uh, all the questions and comments from children for the first hour 
and then we'll be carrying on with the regular show at 4.30. some more elephants up ahead of us panda so I think we're gonna go see if we can find them for a little bit of a better view for you all it has been amazing to be with these elephants for so long I really thought we might not even catch up with them again but it is quite a big herd we're coming up to them now I think these elephants are all going to come out in front of us everybody so just bear with us as they walk across this open clearing um dina you're 12 years old do you want to know do we find more animals by listening or looking at footprints or tracks ones um yeah. and hmm i'll have to think about that dina i think probably Oh, a lot of the time some animals are easier to find by sound, some are easier to find by tracks. So if we think of things like leopards and lions, much easier to find them by tracks. Elephants, easier by sound because they often make um, noise uh, from, there's one coming out in the road, there we go. Um, they make a lot of trumpeting or they break a branch or their movement in the bush is quite a lot so they brush up against leaves and things like that so it's easier to hear them moving so I think Dina it really does depend on the animal to answer your question all right let me go forward one more time and then we should get a nice view of all of these elephants coming out here Hopefully as they feed, they're going to come across this clearing and we can have a nice look at them. Oh, well, and there's a bird there as well. Look at that. It's called a fork-tailed drongo. And what it does, it tries to eat all the insects. There we go. It's hovering about at the top there. And as the elephant walks through the grass, there's a lot of little insects that fly up. And so that little bird tries to eat them. It's an easy meal for that bird. Finally, a good view, Panda, yes. in the open. Hey, it was worth it <laughs> to stick with them for so long. just saying hello to us. It only has one tusk actually and it just put some grass on top of its head. <laughs> um, Brenda you want to know how long it takes to, to, to move animals to a game reserve? Sure. Um, I think it really does depend on, on where the animals are coming from and where they're going to. But I would say it usually needs to be done in about a day just because the animals need to be asleep when that happens and that has to be monitored and, and looked after by vets and, and animals need water and things like that. So um, if it was a multi-day thing, I don't know how long, especially something like an elephant, for example, can be kept under, um, you know, out of consciousness. 
So I, I'm assuming, depending on the distance, if they have to, you know, move it, then they might fly it so that it's only for a certain number of hours that it can be kept unconscious for. On safari. are going to disappear very soon again behind this bush so I'm going to pull forward <laughs> difficult to see but uh, they are going to come out a little bit more into the open very soon there we go one is coming you're nine years old that is such a good question and it's something I only learned probably four or five years ago um, I didn't actually even think about it to be honest with you as to why there are no birds sitting on elephants those birds Warren are called oxpeckers we get red billed and yellow billed oxpeckers here um, in Juma 
and yes indeed there are no birds that I've ever seen sit on an elephant and um, it's not because they don't have ticks that's often what some people may think or say but that's not true elephants have lots of ticks I've seen them but the truth is that elephants just really don't like the birds on them they don't what we call tolerate them they chase them off immediately flick their tail shake their head and so the bird knows that it's not welcome so it just doesn't try it anymore but rhinos, hippos, giraffe, impala, zebra, wildebeest, they all allow the oxpeckers on them. So that's why we see them on all those other animals. But just not on elephants. Ooh. Looks like mom and calf there bit of discipline maybe happening. I think the one was in the other one's way. <laughs> Definitely got a little bit of a nudge on the bum with the tusk there. Oh, we've got a nice gap under. How great is this? <laughs> Very grateful for this gap right now. You see how the elephant holds the grass in its mouth and actually adds more and more and then chews. It's very interesting. Almost creates like a big bundle in its mouth and then takes a break and often once it's got enough in there it'll move on and then start taking from elsewhere. There's an elephant coming across in front of us as well. I think it might come across the road. I thought maybe they were heading in that direction. We'll just have to see. Thanks Tammy, you are 10 years old, you are saying that the elephants look so cool behind the trees. They do look very cool and very well camouflaged. <clears throat> They've just taken a stop there, mom and calf, behind that tree. I did think that they were going to head straight over the road, but I think they will come, but just not immediately. go back to this one. Oh there is one, sorry, <laughs> Panda just as we said it. There is one there crossing the road. And that's one of the young bulls that took a swim this afternoon. I think they're all gonna come Panda. I'm just gonna pull forward just so that we're in a nice position. And if we patient everyone, I think we are going to see all of these elephants cross over here.
everyone our patience is paying off we've had one elephant across the road already and the others are on their way they are all behind these trees right next to the road on the right hand side and I think very soon we're gonna have a whole bunch of them come across the road there's a little one that's just hiding behind the tree on the right actually two little ones There we go, there comes out one. This is so fun to wait and know that it's going to happen, but you have no idea when. So it's like a little treat every time an elephant makes its way out. There we go, there's one of the little ones. We've had about four or five elephants cross already. There are still more coming. One is still feeding on our right. There's a big matriarch that's a little bit further back. She'll normally be right at the back of the herd usually. It's been amazing to follow these elephants on their journey this afternoon. All the way from Pufflesook Dam up here to the boundary. And uh, as they finished their drink, they made their way towards a pan where they, some of them splashed themselves with mud. There comes the matriarch on our right now. Through the trees. And the matriarch, boys and girls, is the name for the oldest and wisest elephant in a herd. And she leads them. Oh, she's just behind the tree. I'm sorry. But it is moving. It is moving. Um, I thought she was going to come a little bit closer. But she's found something delicious to snack on there. That's delaying her movement. But she will eventually come uh, in the same direction as the others. There we go, she's moving again. She's basically the herd's leader. see her come out hopefully soon on the other side and she'll cross the road yes they're both coming now both on the move Well, boys and girls, we just want to thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon for the Kids Drive. We have really enjoyed showing you a lot about elephants as well as some tracks and signs that Cedric did with you as well. Thank you for sending through all your comments and your questions. We loved hearing from you. We will be back with the kids drive tomorrow afternoon for the first hour of the sunset safari.
remember that we'll go straight into our normal sunset safari for the last two hours of the, of the show immediately from here. We're waiting with bated breath on these elephants. They've come closer to the side of the road. And very soon I think they will cross. Just waiting for the right moment. There we go. I see a trunk. I see a trunk from the matriarch. There it comes. And there comes the next one. Welcome to our sunset safari everyone and we are just staying with these elephants. We waited so long to have the last two come across the road so we thought why not just continue with that as they amble along here. But a very warm welcome to all of our regular viewers and as those eddies head off we sort of close the chapter on these elephants for the afternoon which have been a whole first hour of the drive for us well from myself a very good afternoon to you my name is amy and behind the camera with me is panda there we go <laughs> i'm gonna turn my head around now because it is very bright <laughs> and put my sunglasses back on. All right, well, it has been unbelievable to spend that time with these elephants. They have now crossed over out of Juma and headed onto the property on our left-hand side, which is Buffalsook, so we are not gonna keep up with them anymore. We are gonna carry on down the road. Now, remember that this is a live and interactive show, everybody, so please do make sure that you send through your comments and your questions to us. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know who you are, maybe where you're watching from, what you love about the drives, maybe what you're hoping to see this afternoon. That's always a good one. If anyone is hoping for elephants, check. We'll see what else we can find here for you all. Steve, yes, and of course, happy Earth Day. Thank you for saying that. Um, we, of course, are celebrating with being out in the bush live on safari with you all. So I'm really glad that we were able to do that this afternoon and we'll be live again tomorrow afternoon as well, even though it is Tuesday. gonna head down onto our other boundary now and yes just checking for anything really our selling panda I'd love to see some more zebras we saw them once briefly the other morning but they sort of just ran past us or in and out of Juma Thanks, dark main lover hello to you as well good to have you with us once again always wonderful to welcome our regular viewers on the show and also to anyone who's new welcome we do hope that you'll experience a bit of what it is like to be on game drive out in the african bush with us and it's starting to cool down which myself and panda are very grateful for <laughs> It has been very hot today and almost uh, unexpectedly so. we sort of expecting cooler weather now heading into almost the last bit of April. But it has been relentlessly warm today. And finally, actually, it is relenting. It is um, cooling off quite nicely as the afternoon wears on. Well, 
since we are talking about Earth Day, we are going to send you over to watch a clip about something that's very, very important to sustaining life on Earth. The reason that we can all be here, including the wildlife and the animals and the plants and us as humans, and that is water. Water is a fundamental resource for all creatures. In the wild, water sources are the sites for an array of activities. In the southern parts of Africa, the dense thickets and lush greenery dwindle and crisp up with the winter season. making watering holes a gathering spot for grazers and a potential hunting spot for predators. But the giants of the Lofeld never disappoint when visiting their local watering hole. Elephant trunks are generally amusing appendages, but are particularly entertaining when used to quench their thirst or cool themselves down. In East Africa, the Mara River is infamous for the treacherous task it presents to the migration herds. However, it is also home to a variety of winged, scaled, and wadding animals. It serves a necessary purpose, but also allows for moments of sheer joy and fun. Well, 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 a very good afternoon to everybody and uh, welcome to our Sunset Safari on this beautiful Monday afternoon. And as you know, we are celebrating World Earth Day. And uh, well, my name is Cedric, and behind the camera with me on a Wendy, we've got a muzzles and boy and his old teddy bear. And yes, it's going to be a great afternoon. And uh, hoping that we're going to get great sightings for today. Well, joining us on the drives this afternoon on uh, Safari, we've got Amy and uh, Panda, and an amazing team in Johannesburg is Nadine and Luyanda, the two directors, and Simba is, is the, uh, the tech, almost said he's the director, you can imagine Simba's the director, I think oh, Simba must be smiling now in Johannesburg, he's like yes, yes, and of course our tech guru this side here at uh, Juma is uh, Showmax. This is uh, live. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you, Nadine. So Nadine says, it's so wonderful seeing and pouring myself out here this afternoon. Thanks, Nadine. <laughs> but yes, this is live and interactive. So if you've got any comments and questions that you want to send through to us, and if you are watching on the YouTube channel, please make sure that you do subscribe or join as a member. And uh, yes, and you can send those comments and questions through, or if you're watching on the Wild Earth website, make sure you, that you do register. All right, so my plan for the afternoon, I was around at uh, Treehouse Dam, Twin Dams, 
Not much happening around the dam area at the moment. I know water is very important, as you saw the clip a little bit earlier. So I thought maybe we were going to be lucky with something around there. Nanny. <laughs> Sorry, Nadine. Nanny. Nanny? The, oh, the. Oh, oh, the nanny, the nanny. Okay, thank you, thanks, Nanny. The, the, the nanny. Interesting. All right, uh, the nanny. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, well, I'm hoping for some southern ground horn. We haven't had southern ground hornbills for quite some time. Oh, I haven't. So, I'm hoping for some southern ground hornbills for the afternoon. Hyenas always, anytime. Anytime I will take hyenas up, so yep. But other than that, I am going to the eastern corner here, or eastern side of uh, Juma. I'm going to go back Yeah, just going to uh, scratch around. See, they, they did have a herd of buffaloes to the east of uh, Juma this morning. So I'm just hoping that that herd of buffaloes do make their way into Juma. If, that do, if it does happen that way, it's going to be fantastic because as soon as buffaloes start moving this side, it's just going to really lure some of the lions around the area back onto Juma, so um, crossing fingers for that. You know, there was no luck with those other lines from this morning. Uh, we tried to search around to see if we we're going to get lucky with them, but no idea. I think the last thing, um, I think the, the lines went a little bit further west on quarantine um, and towards maybe the west itself. They got the Nkuhumas. They got some of the Kambula male lions, the Nkuma pride, all in the west. So I've got a feeling maybe those three that were seen on dam cam last night went directly back west. So yeah, that's what I think. I'm not too sure exactly the composition of of all the Nkuma members if it's all there, if they're all there in the west. So no new new idea. Other than that, just go this side, maybe Tlalamba as well, the leopardess. I know she went into Torchwood yesterday afternoon. This morning, nothing nothing came through back uh, west onto Juma. So, and I took a look on the western, eastern boundary, looked to the north, nothing. Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Wild Earth is turning 17 and we want to make the years count. <laughs> 17 years of achievements, close encounters and special memories. He's got it, he's got it and he's straight up a tree. Come along as we reflect on our top 17 greatest moments. Here's to more years of connecting you to nature. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
<laughs> Thanks, Nadine. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Leander, our director, our second director for the afternoon, he's been to Yellowstone. I did not even know that. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I've got Gwyn behind us, our head of directors, and uh, I had to kind of get the confirmation from Gwyn, and Gwyn was just like, yep, he's been there. That is fantastic. All right, then. So, yeah, so apparently you can go camp like anywhere. You just take a no, I did believe. I just had to get a confirmation from uh, Gwyn. Thank you, Nadine. Have a lovely day. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> getting back to the point, I was just saying with the tent and all that, so we can actually just pitch the tent up in certain spots there at uh, Yellowstone Park, and um, wow. I would love that. <laughs> Well, we left those elephants, everybody, merrily on their way into Buffelzuk and we've come down the other boundary and now heading back up, um, sort of northwest into Juma. And I've been keeping my eyes open, Panda as well, trying to spot anything along the way, but so far uh, no luck at the moment. In between those elephants crossing the road, we did see a, two Koki Franklins cross the road, which was very cool. They're quite rare to see out here. We hear them relatively often, but they are uh, one of the rarest species of Franklin to see. That was fun. They've got, uh, the male has got a golden head, um, golden feathered head, which is very pretty. We're going to check one or two pans, head past some water holes as well with the heat. Who knows what's hanging around there? Also see a lot of hyena tracks around. I know that was some of the expectations for the drive, hoping to see some hyena. We had a brief glimpse of one last night, apparently I missed that, but um, it was there. So they are around and as it gets cooler and maybe when we get the spotlights out again later on this evening, that'll be the time when we see one. But on hot days, I've seen hyenas come to cool down in water holes. They just sort of plonk down and sit there, so it's also a possibility. Well, that is a red crested Korhan that just flew as we drove past. Also more elephant tracks in the road. Oh, Lana. Um, not in South Africa, <laughs> that's something that happens up in Kenya, um, in terms of it being broadcasted on Wild Earth, I'm not sure about that. Plans for that to be, to be on Safari Live, wow, very cool to be able to see the migration happening and all that is part of it. Migration is, is a 
mainly the world Tanzania and basically follow the rains as they come in the year um, but all the zebra and it's incredible to see it's on my bucket list for one day to be able to visit and and see that for myself well it's a beautiful scene down here we're just heading down into this sort of uh, dry riverbed and it is a beautiful scene with the sunshine coming through, some birds calling. There were some fresh elephant bull tracks, massive tracks in the road. And I can imagine them feeding their way through this area. Enjoying the soft grass that's growing here. Alright, well, as we sit here and enjoy this peaceful scene, you are going to head over to Cedric for an update on his bumble. Thank you, Amy. Alright, so I'm sure some of you or a lot of you want to know what's happening with our young male leopard, old Marips. Alright, so... Look, put it this way, I know that some of you like understand that he's saying that, you know, he doesn't want us there. I agree with you. I mean, he's upset. He's sore. He's not uh, feeling well. But on top of the contrary to that as well, is that Sabi Sands has asked us, I spoke to the Sabi Sands yesterday. So what happens is they've spoken to James as well, spoken to me. And they've just asked us, please, for people from the wild earth, if you guys can, if you go past there, just go and take a look. In other words, just go take a look just to get an update on him because we've got to know when he moves. If he moves from there and we don't follow up there and he's gone long time ago or something happens to him, we won't know what's happened to him. So we need to go and just do a, maybe like a daily update, a check, just to check quickly. Oh, he's there, he's looking good, his wound is still fine, just to, you know, have a, a good overview of it and then move away. Of course, not spend the entire drive there. There's no other vehicles going there as well. So he hasn't got that pressure on him at all. There's no pressure vehicles. All the, actually funny enough, all the lodges have done so well, not putting any pressure on him, which is fantastic. So now this morning I went past just to double check there because once again, the Sabi Sands is not here. They are so busy. They can't just um, focus on one thing here. They've also got, uh, other priorities as well. So they got to look at other areas in the Soviet Sands for other, due to other problems and things that they have to do. So they also asked us, so I said, okay, this morning I came past here just to double check. Um, unfortunately, there's no kill in the tree. There's nothing, there's no no kill anywhere there. We found his tracks actually coming down this road here. We found his tracks coming down this road. So in other words, he was moving from Biffleshook Dam, from the dam area, he was moving here in a uh, easterly direction on this road called Hippo Pools. He was coming down this road and it seems like there's a lot of hyena tracks as well coming in. So it looks like he put, was pushed back that way. So he decided to turn and he went back into that direction. But he's nowhere. He might be around Biffleshook Dam somewhere. No idea. I'm not going to put pressure on him. As I say, if you see him, we see him. If we don't, as, as long as we know where his tracks are going. So we can kind of have a rough idea his movement. Just his movement. And uh, that's exactly what we've done. So, but we haven't seen him this morning. We just saw his tracks. Okay, there it is.
for the rest of the lionesses. Sorry for losing Amy there. Uh, I think she just went into a little bit of a bad uh, signal spot. All right. Uh, I am just going north of uh, Biffles Hook Dam area. I'm going to Biffles Hook uh, boundary. That's just the northern boundary of uh, Juma. Head over that side. And I'm going to just try and do a bit of a scratch around there. I'm just hoping for Tlalamba. It'll be nice to see her coming down this side again. Well, hopefully she hasn't made a kill inside Torchwood. And Torchwood is just a property to the to the east of us where tracks went in yesterday and nothing has come back uh, west. Those are wild dogs, so uh, that'll be nice. So Gwen is sitting behind us here this afternoon and she's like, oh, this afternoon as we went out on drive, she was just saying how nice it'll be just to see some uh, wild dogs for, for the day. I agree with Gwen. I think we haven't had wild dogs for quite some time. You know, the last time we had wild dogs on Jimma was on the 13th of April, if I'm not mistaken on that. 13th of April, that's almost half a month. Or well, just less than half a month. Wild dogs and buffalo, that'll be nice. Sherry P, you must welcome, as I say, I uh, always will try and keep you updated on. Uh, on Marips, whenever we find out something from the Sabi sand, or if we find out for ourselves, um, we always will try and keep you posted on that. Now, this is unfortunate. Look, the thing is, uh, so the Sabi sand, they can't always just go, come back and forth here. So they, I think yesterday and today they were in the west, western area of the San Sabi San, the western side of the reserve, busy with other things. So. so we just kind of gave them a hand on checking up on him. Joshua and Sumi would be nice. And Sumi would be fantastic. We haven't, had, we haven't seen Insumi for a long time. I think the last time we saw Insumi is when uh, she was busy feeding on that Janet. I think that was the last one, isn't it, Nadine? And then Nadine, watch out, Nadine was just the director that day. Hmm. That was the last time we saw, saw Insumi on Chitwa. I've heard that they've been having sightings in Torchwood and uh, they've had in Biffleshook. So 
I'm just ambling very slowly along here. Because this could be either two things. Either if my lips has left uh, Buffelzook Dam and he's come across here, at least I can see if his tracks have come across here. Or if uh, Tlalamba has come from the north and came in into this road. Sorry, the sun is very, very sharp. Connie, ah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Marips will avoid the area where he got snared in. I mean, it's difficult to say. It's, uh, Maybe. I mean, he came up, he came all the way this side, I think, after getting out of that snare. I think he came all the way here into Juma, so just to avoid that area. So, I don't know. I mean, I, guess, uh, I can't really think for him, you know, and what he's thinking. So, you know, it's, it's a wild animal. Well, I do hope he does avoid that area. I saw that puff adder here yesterday afternoon. Hey, Paul. Nice to get to see one of them around here again. I'm just going to go very slowly yeah, and just see. Just to see what we can pick up on in, uh, on this road. Especially this time of the year now when we're slowly but surely going. These little dips become nice and cool. Oh, it's so nice. On a hot day, we come into these little dips and all that cold air just sinks. All right, well, we're going to continue with this road. I think uh, let's go and take a look at a beautiful clip all about uh, predators versus prey. All the inhabitants of the animal kingdom depend on the new life brought by the rains. From the gentle giants who constantly roam, forever browsing the woody trees, to the minute meerkats foraging for grubs and beetles. They spend a large percentage of their lives searching for sustenance. Millions of angelids follow the rainfall across the Serengeti Mara ecosystem, constantly grazing and scouting for fresh new grass. But these high numbers bring high drama. Because as the herds migrate, thousands will fall victim to the surrounding predators. The crocodiles lie in wait, knowing that the herds will have to cross the treacherous waters. The big cats stalk and hunt the massive gatherings, picking off the weak. The hyenas also get their fair share of the spoils. Although they are famed scavengers, these hardy beasts are skilled hunters in their own right. As the rains ease up in East Africa, they begin in Southern Africa. The nutrient-rich plant life means healthier herbivores, which in turn means healthier predators. A vigorous leopard is much more likely to be able to hoist a heavy kill into a tree, satiating their hearty appetite. And a robust wild dog pack are odds-on favorites to run down any prey, replenishing valuable energy reserves needed for survival in the African wild.
while we were bumbling along and found these violet backed starlings in the tree. There's a male just on the right and a female on the top left. There were a few more but um, a few of them did fly off. And they look completely different to one another. The male's got this beautiful coloration. It used to be called a plum coloured starling. And uh, it's a beautiful sort of perp deep purple iridescence. The female however is completely different. Um, I remember the first time seeing a violet back starling, I was so confused, I had no idea what bird it is. She's got lots of dots on her chest, lots of streaks on her chest and quite brown in colour on the back. You can actually see in this picture so nicely the difference between them. Catching the loss of the afternoon sun just before it dips below the horizon. Just a reminder to everyone that this is a live and interactive show. We would love to hear from you. Please do say hello, let us know your thoughts, uh, what you're enjoying, uh, if you have any questions as well. But what a peaceful scene. I love to take a bit of time and just sit quietly and use my binoculars to watch these birds. There's a hippo calling in the background. We're not too far from one of our water holes. We'll go check that out just now. Oh, hey Forty, I have an answer for you. It took me a while to decide, but I have decided and I'm sticking to it. I think the gorgeous Bushrike has the prettiest call. That is its name. We haven't heard wrong. It is called Gorgeous Bushrike. It is beautiful, but it also has, it was one of the first calls I was able to recognize undoubtedly. And I trained, um, did my guide training up in northern Kuzula Natal. And that was the call that we heard very often there. We don't hear it at almost ever here in the Kruger National Park. It's a rarer bird to see. I have seen it in the Sabi Sands before in the south. Um, and every now and again the call pops up, but it's, it's not something we hear very often at all. Can actually get out my bird book and show you what a gorgeous bush rock looks like. Completely different to these violet back starlings. Sure. So here's the book everybody, just to show you, for those who are interested in what a gorgeous bush rack looks like, it's this top one here, um, and it's got this beautiful red throat just underneath, and like, like most bush racks, they enjoy the thick bush, and it's very, very tricky sometimes to see them, but you can hear their call very clearly. Um, 
when they are calling and you can know exactly where they are. The, the relatives of them that we do see here are um, here on this page. So the grey-headed bushrike is one that we see quite often, also known as the morning bird. It does morning meaning sad, not morning meaning good morning <laughs> because it does this sort of it almost sounds like a fog horn in the distance it's call and then down here is the orange breasted bushrike which is another uh, very common bird we often hear calling and that has the coffee tea or me coffee tea or me call uh, and that we hear very often as well We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content. All right, I did go past the Gary Dam there. I saw there were some baboons there, but unfortunately the baboons are right against the fence of the lodge, uh, against the, the wire that side. So I wasn't gonna go and show that up there. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna go back to where these line tracks from this morning. So they came across, they came back this way, those lines, those three lines, and they came back this way and then they went straight up towards uh, the big open clearing there, just south of camp. So I'm going to go quickly that side and do a little bit of a scratch around there and to see. That's if, you know, that's if they still, yeah, I've got a feeling they might have crossed west, but we'll try. We'll see, we'll see. So I didn't get any line tracks actually crossing over another road called Zoe's. And you know, if they would have crossed there, then uh, I can understand, but I didn't get any tracks that side this morning or this afternoon. Well, actually this afternoon. I think that's why those zebras last night, remember those zebras were very, very uh, nervous last night, very skittish last night when we were coming back from um, our sunset safari and uh, we got all those zebras here on the big clearing and I think they were just really skittish because these lions were pretty much on hot on their trail. At least now the afternoon is cooling down now. The sun is going to start setting very soon. 
Linda Poli, you got your Juma clan uh, shirt on. He says he's going to bring us some hyena luck. Yes, Linda Poli, I'm sure we're going to get some. We're going to get some luck uh, very soon, very very soon. Just trying to work this out here now, and I think our luck is going to happen in front here. So I'm just crossing fingers if that uh, that it does happen. Let's see if we can pick up on something around this clearing, or just to the west of this uh, clearing. It's either yeah or Rebecca's, one of these two places, yeah. It's in this drainage line, yeah. Oh, and the sun is sharp. This is like stunning time of the afternoon. We've got this lovely golden light. This is where we need a leopard up in, in a tree on, on this open area. Oh. Let's see. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe. All right, well, we're going to quickly do the southern side of quarantine. Let's head over to Amy. It's okay, keep the birds. Well,. I think these birds just heard that they went live, Panda. I don't know how they do it, but it is amazing <laughs> how that happens. <laughs> There's one though that stuck around. We had a beautiful sighting of those go birds on this dead tree. They were busy preening themselves and all sorts of things, but um, that one side has, has had a little bit of a scratch there. So we'll see. Hopefully this one sticks around for us. It's just so beautifully caught in the last rays of light there. Oh, this hippo. Maybe let's go to the hippo. It's starting to spray its dung. Oh, wow. <laughs> I told Panda before, I was like, oh, it's starting to stand up. I wonder what it's going to do. <laughs> that is an amazing comment. That last go away bird just flew away as well. Um, great go away bird. That is exactly what they do. That is what their name says. So we shouldn't be surprised that they go away. <laughs> Very clever. Good comment that. This hippo was just marking its territory there with its dung like that, flicking it from side to side. It's amazing to see how quickly that tail actually works. He's decided to rest. <laughs> oh man. But he is moving. It's amazing how we saw him this morning here, just completely still sitting in the water. And now he's going up and down. He called earlier. So he is he's busy. He's knowing he knows that it's almost time for him to leave this water hole and go off and start grazing. While he's sitting still, there is a little dove here, that panda that's come down to drink very sweetly. Whitney, there is an area um, that's known for sort of its, uh, its hippos being walking through the town and that, and that's an area called St. Lucia, uh, which is in KwaZulu Natal near the coast. Uh, it's a famous estuary where there's a lot of crocodiles and hippos and things like that and often because the hippos come out at night and start grazing uh, sometimes they do end up walking 
through the town. So that's probably the most well-known place in South Africa. I love sitting at a water hole at this time of day. It's just magical. There's the hippo here, there's doves there, there's blacksmith lapwings, there were go-away birds on the tree. Every now and again there's a little bit of something to spot and see. Oh, he's getting up again. I wonder if he's going to spray some more dung. The other day we were with him, he rolled over onto his back. It was quite funny. Oh, are we going to get a yawn? Oh, we might still. I'm hoping for a yawn. I'm not leaving here until we get a yawn, panda. <laughs> Oh, the bum's coming out again. There we go. On the 30th of April, Wild Earth will be coming off the DSTV platform. We want you to come with us into a more sustainable future. How, you might ask? Well, YouTube is a brilliant way for you to enjoy the live drives. Come to our channel and you can enjoy the live drives for free. Alternatively, join our membership program and you'll get an assortment of other wonderful perks. We'll see you on YouTube. Others know that the spot is taken.
Molly has stood up now, everybody. This is very exciting anticipation. I'm not sure what he's going to do, but we're here to catch it on camera. He's deciding, is it time to go? Is it not time to go? Oh, and we are down again. But it's not going to be long. It's not going to be long and he's going to get out of that water. It's just keeping us on our toes, just keeping us guessing. <laughs> all the viewers who are currently watching um, on DSTV and uh, know that if you're wondering what that countdown is on your screens though that that is the number of days left before Wild Earth is no longer on DSTV and the alternative to that is through YouTube the YouTube app on many smart TVs at the moment um, have the YouTube app available and you can also become a member there for a minimal fee and you can watch Wild Earth completely ad free on that. And that is because Wild Earth is not being paid for their content which they're producing um, and giving DSTV access to and so because of that um, Wild Earth has decided to take its channel off of DSTV unless they change their minds. birds around I'm just checking but nothing out of the ordinary Panda, I think I'm gonna loop around there is a gap just further around that actually puts us a lot closer to the hippo maybe we can get a different angle and catch some of those moments of it closer up Uh, Gina, I'm so glad you're enjoying the hippo. It's so nice to actually spend time with the hippo where it's doing more than just lying in the water, not doing very much at all. So it's lovely to come here at this time of day where uh, he, it does start to get more active and do a few different things. I'm just going to drive quite slowly, everybody. I don't want to disrupt him or cause him to feel like he can't follow his usual daily routine because that's actually what we want him to do. <laughs> Just a few more meters and then we'll be there. No, hippos don't eat fish, they eat grass, they are herbivores and that's why we see them coming out the water in the evening time. They go and graze all night long and then they make their way back to the water in the early hours.
but it is a common misconception because of course most of the time when people see hippos they are in the water so you think they are aquatic animals just like the other aquatic animals but they are herbivores they do not eat meat it does depend on a few different things um, you know first of all it really does depend how much grass is available um, I think in the summertime especially they don't have to move very far at all If you think about it you know the only real reason they would have to travel a very far distance is for their food or if the you know a young male's been kicked out from other older males and needs to find um, needs to find a new sort of pan or water body to survive in but you know if if they have to they can move about between six to eight kilometers if they have to I think that's about six miles or so um, five to six miles but um, for the most part they'll only move up maybe a few kilometers every night like I say depending on the food source in winter time they'll have to move a lot further because the grass disappears and in order to get the amount they need um, they can cover a lot more distance if they have to. And that might be, you know, depending on the distance they cover, it, it is about the amount of food that they need to get in. So a fully grown hippo will need to eat mm, about 40 kgs or so of food. That's quite a lot of grass. But while we wait, sit and wait with this hippo, you are going to head over to Cedric. Thank you so much, Amy. And uh, yes, as you know, today or for this uh, week, we are celebrating Earth Week and uh, just the amazing planet that we do live on. And uh, we're sitting here at this spot here most afternoons. I love coming here just for a, a couple of minutes just to breathe in and breathe out and just take in this beautiful oxygen and always enjoying the sunset. I just love the colors. I love the colors of the evening that is about to come upon us. Lovely. It's so important just to sit back sometimes, take a little bit of time out for yourself, enjoy the surroundings. If you've got a little park close by to your house or if you're close to a little reserve or a nice little natural area, just go there and go sit down for a few minutes, grab your cup of tea or beverage of choice, some snacks,
Mary, yes indeed it is setting ready. Slowly but surely heading into winter time. So you'll find the sun has set what's around about I say 15 minutes ago. So give and take about 25 past 5 the sun went down. And you'll find further we go into winter the sun will set much earlier. And we get a little bit of a night drive and what's nice about the night drive with the spotlight out is that we can start looking for a nocturnal animals. When I say nocturnal animals, animals that roam around at night time. Things that we don't really see during the daytime. And I'm hoping maybe we get some lions coming onto Juma or a leopard. Which would be fantastic. Somewhere. As Rexon says, you never know. Oh, African sunset. You even got the name. We made it for earthly sunset. Yes, Africa sunset. Fantastic. There's nothing like... It's a little bit more, I can just say, a little bit more colorful compared to a summertime. So I love the winter sunsets and sunrises. But please don't forget tomorrow, uh, once again, tomorrow morning, there is going to be no live drive for our sunrise safari, but we will have a live drive on our sunset safari again tomorrow afternoon. So make sure that you do jot that down in your diary or put a little alarm on for tomorrow's sunset safari. <laughs> Diane from the UK, you say I'm turning into Steve. Yes, well, like I'm, I'm, I'm just getting that kind of that vibe, you know, that that aura from Steve. That zening moments of, you know, just bringing yourself towards yourself. <laughs> Breathe in. Breathe out. I think when I'm breathing in and breathing out, oh, I'm now, now lightheaded. <laughs> I don't think I've got the lungs of Steve. <laughs> See, that's my problem. I can't, my head, my, my brain bounces all over the show. I struggle to sit for like one or two minutes and do nothing. That's the only thing. My, like, you know, all of a sudden I have to say something or I have to look somewhere or do something. So, but I'll try. You try.
that well he's moving everybody he's, this is all the signs that he's getting ready to leave the water oh there we go I don't know it's been a false alarm before so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get too excited This may be it, everyone. is a funny animal look at those funny little legs but how cool to see this hippo finally out the water starting to graze and that's his mission for the night to get in as much grass as possible And off he goes for a night of feeding. It is grazing time indeed. And it's also sunset time. Oh, Franny, I couldn't agree with you more. I am slightly biased, so, you know, I'm always going to say that African sunsets are the best sunsets in the world, but I've never quite experienced them anywhere else in quite the same way.
Andrew, there are a few different types of bats that we get. I see them flying around at the moment above the water. Um, there's basically your two biggest distinction, the one biggest distinction between bats is either you get fruit eating or insect eating bats. Um, and things like epilated fruit bat, um, Mauritian fruit bat, you get uh, slit face bats. Um, I think one of the common ones is a yellow bellied. Oh, I forgot the name now. Yellow bellied something. Um, but there are a few different species, and actually um, quite a few of them that are around that we get in the area. And bat bats are so important. I mentioned the other day. I'm not a huge fan of bats inside my house <laughs> or inside my room, but out here they're so important in controlling insect numbers. Um, and so that is, they, they perform a really important function. still see the hippo everybody it's moving in the background there I actually didn't expect to see it again but it um, has made an appearance be through the buffalo thorn I remember that's a good question and yes actually they are what we call hippo pods and a hippo tends to have a routine of, of where they walk out the water and then where they go. It's not necessarily set in stone, but um, out here you can clearly see a hippo path. It's two sort of tracks right next to each other, almost like a train track, because of the way they walk.
Sometimes, uh, well, not sometimes, quite a few times really in my career, sitting with impalas like this now, where you don't see any, see anything happening. All of a sudden you see just the impalas start bolting and or alarm calling and then bolting and then you, you realize there is a predator that's a very close. Almost use them like as our, our senses or use their senses for our benefit on, on looking out for any pritters around the side. Mm, see them wagging their tails like that? This wagon just to kind of uh, shoot off all the insects, all the little flies and that that gathers on their sides and at their bottoms and just kind of swat them away with their tails. Quite a few of them, man. Well, in the thicker areas, usually this time of the night they'll start moving more into clearings and all that just for safety reasons. You know, when you're in a clearing like this, it's always easy to look out for any danger. And especially tonight, it's almost not a full moon yet. I think it's about three quarters to being a full moon. But it's still going to be quite a bright evening. And you'll find... When is it? Is it full moon? Ah, full moon is tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow night is full moon. But still with this kind of moon when it's bright like that, you know, these animals tend to become a little bit safer because then they can at least see things. Look, their eyesight is way better than ours, like the diurnal animals here, like the impalas, for instance. So at night time when you've got a full moon or like a moon like tonight, you'll find that uh, you know, they can see if there's any danger approaching them. So they know where the danger is. So <laughs> it'll pick up very quickly on those uh, cats if they are approaching them. So you'll find a lot of times lions and leopards tend to use the very bright evenings to patrol their territory and moving around more for that and actually hunting. Look, they'll still hunt. Don't get me wrong, they'll still go and they're still opportunistic. If it's an opportunity there, they'll still take it. But I think when it's dark, dark evenings without any moon, moonlight here, you'll find the predators are way more successful. <clears throat> All right, so um, as you know that we've got uh, our head of uh, directors, Gwyn, um, behind uh, the vehicle, yeah, sitting behind with him, Paul. And uh, please, everybody, if you don't know, and if you don't know, a uh, fast five, fast five is you're more than welcome to ask her anything uh, that you want to, and uh, Gwyn needs to answer those uh, questions in a matter of five minutes, or like the five questions, each question in a matter of a minute. So that's where the fast five comes from. So if you've got any questions for Gwyn, the head of directors of uh, Wild Earth, please send them in. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, make sure that you send them on in there, or if it's on the Wild Earth website, more than welcome to pop them in there. Nadine will, of course, get those questions. I will, she'll send it to me, and then I will relay it to Gwyn. So yes, Gwyn is very excited about it. I can see she is not, she can't wait. So here we go. Send those questions in for Gwyn. <laughs> and when it comes to questions, anything.
<laughs> well, they used to always get us, so, you know, at the end of the day, Nadine, you're right, eh? thanks for that. Remember, Nadine is coming here as well, so yes. remember in the beginning of May, Nadine will be this side, the other director, the director in, that's in our air this afternoon, she will be here in the beginning of May, so yeah. Uh, so just start pre uh, prepping your questions for Nadine then. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Nadine says she'll do a fast five any day. All right, there it is. <laughs> well, they used to always catch us with a fast five. You, you, uh, no. You'll never say that, Nadine. You'll never. You, I'm your favorite na naturalist. Thank you. All right, so going to your first question from Maureen. What is your less, what's your least favorite food? Yeah. Pop. Maureen, <laughs> there's a very simple one there. Pop. Yes. <laughs> pop. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't know what pop is, pop is like polenta for people in the US of A and uh, Europe. It's a maize meal. Pop. Hmm. Lee's favorite food. Interesting. Al okay, Gwen, Alka wants to know, what is your favorite animal? I love elephants. I think they're really cute and adorable. There you go. So Gwen's saying elephants are really cute and adorable. Good choice. I think elephants is always uh, one of the, I can say that one of the favorites around these, part, these parts of the, the world. I think they uh, are fantastic. I love elephants. Oh, wonderful animals. Still love and still still love nature. I uh, wants to know, Gwen, do you have a favorite insect? Nadine. If it's favorite insect, then it's a butterfly, I think. <laughs> a, a butterfly. Yeah, we can say insects. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think the impalas are hitting a fright. <laughs> a butterfly. Yes, yeah, a butterfly. You can say butterfly. That's more than like That's perfect. <laughs> there we go. A butterfly is Gwen's favorite insect. There you go. Oh, beautiful. There's some stunning ones around. <laughs> What's who is Judy H. Yeah, what's her? Who is the most stubborn naturalist? Oh, who is this? Oh, it's from Judy H. Who is the most stubborn naturalist? I haven't met them all, so I can't answer it, like, you know, fairly. So, like, but of, like, why are doing directing? What do you do? <laughs> Can I keep my answer to myself? Uh, me! <laughs> <laughs> um, yo. Yo. I'll say Cedric, because then I know at least he'll still be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it must be actually. Alright, so I'm the most stubborn naturalist. Oh my word. Everybody, I'm very nice. You know me. I'm a nice person. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think I'm... Ah, uh, not me. <coughs> P. 
Pima wants to know, uh, being in the bush now, what, uh, what have you learned that's going to help you in MC? I've learned that there's so much that the naturalists are actually looking out for. Um, that sometimes it's okay to give them a bit more time to do what they need to do and try and figure out different creative ways to allow that to happen. Uh, and the cam ups. <laughs> <laughs> And the camp oh. as it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so God says, yeah, so it just shows you being from, yeah, coming from Janusburg, coming into the bush, it's always nice to have the directors here just to see exactly, you know, the layout of the area and uh, what we what we have to work with, you know, and uh, and it's nice now, at least Gwen's saying, that she knows exactly when we're asking her, just to give us another minute due to maybe tracking on foot or whatever, you know, just things like that. At least it all helps one another. And I think it's always very important. I, I mean, for even the cam ups and the naturalists here to go over to Johannesburg, like myself, I've done it twice already, where you go to the MC to see exactly what they do, you know, what the directors do, what the tech guys do, what the post production team does. You know, it's very important because we are one team. We're not two teams, we are one team. We are Wild Earth. And just to understand each other's roles, and um, I think it's very, very important. So, yes. Good, a good answer there, Gwen. Good answer. Hmm. So yeah, that's why I think. Uh, well, Nadine, are you prepared? Are you ready for the beginning of May? <laughs> yes, Chilapan, Here we come. <laughs> What are we doing at Pen? <laughs> I'll show you a track on the side of the pen and uh, yeah, whoops, swim, <laughs> swim, <laughs> meaning swim. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, thank you everybody for those uh, questions for Gwen. It was, <laughs> that was quite funny.
and this is so cool a chameleon everybody it's curled up it's where it'll sleep tonight so chameleons are reptiles they are diurnal animals meaning that they are active in the daytime and at night oh there's some hippos calling in the background I think that is from Bobab Dam which is just right up in the northeastern corner on um, another property but right next to the boundary road anyway um, and so the chameleons will crawl up to the ends of branches just like this which is what I was explaining the other evening but it's it's part of their tactic for survival and I've got these special modified feet which cling on they clasp on um, and it's 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 its natural position so they don't have to really think about holding on it just they just grip um, so that they can sleep soundly and if something like a genet for example tries to climb up this very flimsy bush willow I don't think it'll even make it up to the end of that branch with how skinny these branches are <laughs> I hope that there's no snake in the tree. Luckily this chameleon is safe and well for now. Also most snakes, because they also reptiles, are only active in the day, most of them. And the ones especially that climb up trees and that sort of thing. So this little chameleon should be safe for the night. There's a slight breeze in the air. You can see how much the tree is moving. But it just is gripped on there, it's not moving anywhere, and so that doesn't bother it at all. Oh, Diana, we definitely see them during the day. Um, it's just because they're on the move that we see them. I suppose it depends who you ask. I've seen a lot of ele um, elephants, <laughs> a lot of chameleons in the daytime, uh, especially crossing the road. That's when we see them most of the time. Uh, and so that's when they're on the move. And because they're on the move, they're less frequently seen, especially if they're moving between grass and things like that. But at night, they perch in one spot. They're very, very bright in comparison to the leaves around them. Um, and they're easy to spot. So that is why we get to see them a lot. I suppose more often uh, like this in a tree at night but if you are driving around the bush a lot or even in places like the Kruger National Park on the tar roads you do tend to see them mm. sorry Nadine I didn't copy your last message if you could just go again But Nadine, I only see one. Um, are you talking about below or above the chameleon? I only see one. The one, the one that might look like it below is a leaf, I think. Yeah. I'll have to check, I'll have to put my spotlight and use my binoculars because unfortunately I can't see properly. I know what you see. So just bear with me everyone. But no, I don't think so. I would have seen the colour. I think I would have seen the colour. Yeah, it's just a leaf. There. Uh, Nadine and Luanda. Yeah, it does look like the back of another one. 
does look like the back of another one. And I suppose that is the camouflage that this chameleon is hoping for. It's that exactly uh, that it looks like a leaf. <laughs> Chameleons are known for being able to change color and this particular species is the only species of chameleon that we get here in the Greater Kruger. It's called the flap-necked chameleon and it's got a bit of a flap by its neck, hence the name. And this is pretty much full adult size, um, so relatively small I suppose to, in comparison to other other chameleons and this particular chameleon range is in um, color from sort of pale whitish creamish color all the way to a very dark black brown um, and then a variation of green in between that it can change to we actually watched the other day um, before I got here to Juma I watched a chameleon uh, very green in the road crossing and as it reached the edge of the road as it started going into the grass it turned brown it was incredible to see A reminder to everyone watching that uh, because of Earth Week tomorrow afternoon we will be live again for a sunset safari we will not be live in the morning we'll be doing our virtual safari thing in the morning but in the afternoon we will be back live first with kids drive from 3 30 to 4 30 and then our usual sunset safari after that Chameleons also have a really cool ability to move their eyes independently. I can't really think of another animal that can do that, to be honest. They can have one eye looking forward and one eye looking back, and it leads to a lot of uh, superstition about them in some of the local African cultures as well. Because of that ability, it's like they can see into the future, but also see into the past. Apparently also can be an omen of bad luck. But I love chameleons. I think they are super cool. As Panda would say, super cool. Super cool. <laughs> <laughs> checking to see if it's used its tail to sometimes they even wrap the tail connected to the branch that they and I don't see that at the moment 
but I love their little curled up tail. It's, uh, it's such a makes such a beautiful spiral. Hmm. And I do this afternoon, this afternoon there's hardly any tracks or any other predators around, just uh, as I said, just for uh, this female leopard in tracks that we had now, this, uh, right at the end here, but uh, other than that, uh, hmm. not too much. Uh, maybe last uh, minute porcupine or owl. Mm. Now, we had that owl at, uh, last night. It was last night, eh, Paul? Yeah. Yeah. We had that pull spotted owlet last night. Oh, brief uh, sighting. That was nice. Come on, chameleon. I don't know why I'm still looking for a chameleon. I don't know, I just always, always challenge myself to see who can spot a chameleon first, and Paul or myself. Hey, and Paul? Yeah. <coughs> you 
You know, it looks like uh, it's that uh, little animal that's green. <laughs> he gets, uh, and Paul says he can, he'll be able to spot uh, a plate of food right about now. <laughs> oh, t uh, tomorrow's lasagna. Is it today? I thought it's Tuesday, it's lasagna night. Oh. All right, well, we're going to slowly make our way to the pots and pans there at uh, the Juma kitchen. Let's head over to Amy. Well, I am not sure when lasagna night is either. Pandi, you know, do you know when lasagna night is? No idea. I don't think it's tonight. No. Is it a Monday? Yeah, today is a Monday. But is that lasagna night? No idea. No idea. No, we also don't know. Sorry. But it'll be a great surprise if it is. It might be tomorrow, actually, if I'm thinking about it now. Good luck, <laughs> Panda says good luck, Mpo. Uh, we've just come across the small herd of impalas, so I thought, why not show you all them peacefully enjoying their evening. It's wonderful that we can show you um, diurnal animals at night because we don't have to spotlight them. It means that we can just use the infrared. But it's so bright tonight, honestly. It's almost full moon. I think full moon must be in two days time or so. Oh, Suzanne, I'm so glad you enjoyed this afternoon. Myself and Panda definitely did. We had a lot of fun out here from really that whole hour with the elephants was fantastic uh, real f really fe feel like we saw that from the from the beginning to end we saw it through the whole way and then we carried on and uh, we saw a few things along the way um, we also actually saw a rhino today and unfortunately we just didn't have signal to share it with you all but that was also a highlight for us and then i mean the scene at the waterhole with the hippo and the birds that was beautiful and i'm so glad we waited it out and got to see him come out and head off to graze that was really special and the beautiful sunset as well and then the chameleon how fantastic was that what a little bonus. But everyone, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We do uh, love having you all on board our live safaris. And we wish you all a pleasant evening uh, or day ahead, depending where you are in the world. And we will be back with you tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon, 3.30 p.m. Central African time. Thank you for all your comments and your questions today. And we will see you again tomorrow. documents real stories about real predators. As witnessed and captured by a band of obsessive wildlife filmmakers that live and work in the bush 365 days a year. 
Previously on the Cat Report, we became acquainted with the spotted royal family of Juma, the magnificent Duke, Tingana, regal yet deadly Queen Tundi, and the playful princess, Klalamba. The North clan of Hyena proved a force to be reckoned with under the matriarch Waffles' leadership. <laughs> 